From the Cervera Newsroom in sunny Miami, welcome to the Miami Real Estate Podcast, your home for expert insight on all things Miami real estate. I'm your host, Omar DeWint. Let's get started. Hi, and welcome to the Miami Real Estate Podcast. I'm Omar DeWint, Communications Executive here at Cervera Real Estate, and today we're bringing you another installment in our How to Be a Top Producer series, dedicated to breaking down the highly effective habits of the industry's top thought leaders, rainmakers, and entrepreneurs. We're going to be talking about a topic close to my heart today, and one that is critical to the success of a real estate agent, and that's branding and marketing. Joining me for the conversation is Irina Kim Sang, an educator and author of Realtor Branding, Marketing Yourself for Success. She's also a broker associate with Coldwell Banker, a passionate marketer, and the vice president of the Asian Real Estate Association of America's Greater Miami Chapter. Irina, thanks for coming. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Glad to have you here. So this is going to be a fun conversation. We're going to talk about something I know we're both very passionate about, that's branding and marketing. But before we get into that, if you could, for our audience, in terms of setting the table, so to speak, tell us a little bit about your personal and professional background. Oh, it was a pleasure. First of all, thank, thank you so much for, for this um, uh, invitation because I'm again as you mentioned this is something that we are on the same wave every time I hear the word marketing I'm just like flying so you just need to make a call and say the one word marketing so I'm, I'm there um, yes this the the reason why I think um, participating in this interview is something that is so close to my heart is that all my background is marketing mm-hmm. so not only educational but also professional um, so I do have um, two master's degrees in marketing, one from University of Colorado, Denver, cool. and another one is from Netherlands, which is um, Maastricht School of Management in Maastricht. So those two experiences of my life, early on in my life, definitely set the, the tone and the attitude that I have throughout mm-hmm. my life. So everything that I do <clears throat> is actually, I look at as marketing opportunities. Mm-hmm. So I've been in different parts of the world. I lived in different parts of the world. Um, I'm originally from Kazakhstan, okay. <clears throat> which is one of the former Soviet Union countries. Um, so my first language is Russian. Mm-hmm. and. Um, when I look at my experiences, I worked on the different management uh, type of arrangements. So I worked in Korean companies, I worked in Middle Eastern companies, mm-hmm. I worked in US-based companies, in UK-based companies. And I think this gave me a different perspective of how to look at, at market, mm-hmm. no matter where I am. So in the case of <clears throat> Miami, um, one thing that kind of brought me to real estate is that um, I, I got my license in 2013. Mm-hmm. Have some water there. I know it's a, <laughs> it's a warm day today. Yeah. <laughs> Summer in Miami. Um, and from from the first initial kind of interaction with the industry, I certainly understood that wow, this is a this is the right time and mm-hmm. the right place to be in, in Miami, especially. Uh, those people who are coming with international backgrounds. Mm-hmm. And as, as we all know, Miami, if you take statistics of the city itself, it's a, it's a relatively young, vibrant, developing. Sure. What a better world is to be at this particular time in this particular place. Mm-hmm. So I took it as an exercise for myself, as an, as an interest in, let's say, a challenge or an experiment. Mm-hmm. So treat it as an accidental realtor or treat it as a strategic realtor. Sure. So I would really think that I, I put myself in, um, in the situation when I, when I took it as a marketing task. All right. So will I so, um, have a background in, in different um, marketing industry, like, industries. Mm-hmm. Um, so I did anything, like you name it. I marketed dairy products, fashion products, uh, insurance products, medical products. You worked with KFC I and Pizza worked, Hut, right? Yes, exactly. One of the uh, top positions that I had um, was I was a regional marketing manager for such brands as Pizza Hut and KFC. What was that like? Who <laughs> have launched, I mean, believe it or not, when you look at the world, it's, so, it's, it's relatively small. Right. So those two brands, which are American brands, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They have been launched uh, from Dubai to the Russian markets, wow. Russian-speaking markets. So I was a regional marketing manager for, for those two brands. Um, so that was like like when you deal with million-dollar budgets. Right. It's, it's just an amazing, amazing opportunity. And... Um, and one of the things which probably would be like really <laughs> like funny, I, sometimes <laughs> I, I, I remember one of my experiences in marketing was I was marketing 
protective coatings against erosion and corrosion okay. for nuclear plants. That sounds super glamorous. Like, so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I mean, I've marked in from toothpick to an elef elephant. Mm -hmm. Why don't I look at, the, at Miami as my new marketing opportunity? Mm -hmm. So that's how I end up starting cool. real estate business. And the, one of the key success points is definitely um, the fact how I was approaching the task. And at, how, at that beginning. How did you do that? And and really, well, let me ask first, at what point in the journey doing all of this, um, mm -hmm. did you realize what the, the critical importance of branding and marketing in, in the success of a business? Well, I think one of the issues that, again, we, we face, we, we're in the same boat with f almost 50,000 real estate professionals. Mm -hmm. So it's a very, very competitive industry, mm -hmm. right? So um, one of the things that I noticed early on, which I think was the lucky moment for me, mm -hmm. is to realize um, that a lot of people who I'm running against as competitors, mm -hmm. right, they treat real estate as pure sales business. Okay. Which is like, even if, in, just notice the conversation that you have with people, okay? Sure. Like, what do you do? I sell real estate. So that's <laughs> kind of the typical answer, right? So, and I think this is historical, right? Like, mm -hmm. like how people um, remember the time without the internet, right? Like you had to have the books, you were the only person possessing that information. So you had some, some form of um, limitations for the public to get information. Mm -hmm. And so what, what is the task of real estate professionals is, yeah, you, you possess the information and you sell that information to the consumer, right? In, mm -hmm. And therefore, and then the end product is real estate. Now the whole situation, um, of the, the business environment has changed so much with internet and, and such an easy access of an average consumer, right, mm -hmm. to gain information, okay? Sometimes, I mean, it's not a secret, sometimes consumer may be even more knowledgeable than, than a realtor. <laughs> so, so a lot of people still got stuck in that framework of the business of sales, okay? Sure. I'm selling, I'm closing. Um, and what I realize is that I think one of the key success elements mm -hmm. of real estate profession is actually to be able to determine early on in mm -hmm. the game that it is your business. Mm -hmm. And if you are in, in, in a person who is setting up your business, especially a business model, right? right you have to be able to answer, um, you know, from, from, from marketing for peace, right? Sure. You have to answer four major questions, mm -hmm. okay? What you're gonna sell, right. so which is product, what you're gonna, um, at what price you're gonna sell it, so which is the, the price points, like mm -hmm. are you luxury product, are you cheap, right? Sure. Um, of course, how you're gonna distribute your product and how you're gonna promote your product. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the basic fundamental questions for any person starting a business right okay which realtors yeah. are entrepreneurs is which 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 i think the most important for people to realize early on is answer at least those four questions to yourself mm -hmm. it's not about okay where i'm gonna get the leads okay i'm gonna close what i'm gonna who i'm gonna start calling no it's about understanding what your business model is gonna be based on so, so this this perspective and also your your corporate background right mm -hmm. led you to a sort of solution to this a, a sort of blueprint exactly. if you will exactly tell me about that well uh one morning i woke up and i said to myself you know there's just so much because um one of the things I did in, in my previous life is I taught marketing as well on at different universities. So I said, you know what? Um, no one has actually applied uh, directly to this industry such topic as branding. Mm -hmm. And how can this be, uh, can this be uh, of value to a real estate professional? So because I'm a real estate professional, I ask myself, I mean, is this a valuable uh, question is it something um, important for the for the real estate and my answer was straight straight to the point is in real estate one of the let's call it tweetables is that it's not <laughs> about who you know but it's who knows you right okay so one of the things of course um, is okay so how do I make that happen mm -hmm. how do I become a person that does not have to pick up the phone every morning to make the living. Mm -hmm. I want to be found by myself. People have to know me. And that's the actually the ultimate goal of any marketer mm -hmm. is not to, see, to, to pick up the phone and start a um, proactive right. approach. But you want, to, um, you want to set up something that works for you 24-7. Mm -hmm. And when you wake up in the morning, you get that lead. Sure. So... 
where where all these questions are going to be answered is only if you start branding yourself. Right. So in other words, unless you start building, designing and managing your own brand, mm -hmm. you are unemployed until your next sale. So and, and I think that's a critical concept to grasp. I think there is value, obviously, to picking up the phone and calling, especially for your close sphere, if you will, your close, right. you know, friends and family mm -hmm. and and letting them know of, of <laughs> important opportunities and deals. But on larger macro scale as a business, exactly. you want the customer to find you, those the people who don't know you to exactly. find you, right? Exactly. So tell me about the seven P's. We're going to lay out, we're going to set the table, as I like to say, mm -hmm. uh, the seven P's for our listeners and we're going to walk through them, right? right. So what, what are the seven P's for the for branding? For branding yourself. Well, um, just to give a little in, kind of introduction, we love abbreviations. So every <laughs> time marketers love abbreviations right. because we like formulas. The five I's. Uh, yeah, the, five I's, <laughs> five, three C's. So this, uh, this particular model also sticks to the same pattern. Mm -hmm. So in order for us to be <clears throat> to make the model useful, is uh, it, it is broken down into seven components, mm -hmm. and each number. component, yeah, and each component has uh, starts with letter P. Sure. So, and that's the logic. So people understand what seven P's is. So when once you learn those, every time you look at it as a formula. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you can focus on understanding that you you know for your brand every single p mm -hmm. that means you have the understanding of your brand and you have clarity mm -hmm. what exactly you are building right. and what exactly you are managing because at the end of the day it's not only about designing your brand identity mm -hmm. but it's also managing it and marketing that brand through time. So Irina, you have seven P's. We're going to lay them out top line for the audience and then we're going to dissect them one by one. So mm -hmm. first and foremost is product. Second is people in place. Third is positioning. Fourth, packaging. Five, promotion. Six, platform. Seven, projection. Yes. Okay, that's, that's correct. correct. Yes. So let's start mm -hmm. with the first P, product. What do you mean by this? All right. So um, again, put yourself into the shoes of the entrepreneurial, like the person who just like has a big dream and sure. you want to start really setting up some form of business. Okay. Right. So the first um, question that I would ask you mm -hmm. as, is if I'm a marketing consultant, do you know what you are bringing to the table? Okay. So what areas of expertise you have at this time? Mm -hmm. um, and the assumption is that and we know a lot of people in real estate are not coming from high school straight to the profession. All of us had some form of experiences, mm -hmm. some form of educational backgrounds, sure. right? Some um, hobbies, um, interests, mm -hmm. uh, engagements, and spheres of influence, sure. right? So the first logical question, if you are starting a real estate business, is to ask what you are bringing to, to the table, meaning what is there already in your luggage that you can take the best advantage right now so of help your me, previous experiences. And help me deconstruct that, maybe sure. walk me through your personal example when you right. came over from corporate world to-, to I'll give things. you several examples. Um, um, uh, we started in this in the, at the same time with, 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 uh, with one of my friends. And that person had your previous, and then I'll tell you about my, my personal sure. experience. Um, we, we started in the same office in Pinecrest, uh -huh. okay? That's the area where we live. And we certainly could go just simply, okay, I mean, we live in Pinecrest, so we, 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 we are in this company conveniently located, so we should go after Pinecrest. I mean, kind of the logical answer. Mm -hmm. But if you, the, and this could be the right choice for some people, and I'm not saying that this is the wrong approach, but if I would have taken that, um, question serious, okay, what do I have now as my key advantages that I can try to set my own way, mm -hmm. okay? I had my answer, which I'll give you in a minute, but I'll give you an example of, of that person first. So she had, uh, her previous background was that she had a, she owned a farm in, in Homestead. So okay. they showed, they sold the farm. Love Homestead Farms. Yeah. Have you been to Paradise Farms? Yes, 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 yeah, yes. I, cool. I mean, it's, 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 it's beautiful. Um, Sorry for the sidebar. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to our friends in Homestead. So, so she, um, her husband, and then uh, herself, they were experienced uh, farm owners, mm -hmm. and, and they decided to kind of downsize, retire, and so they sold the farm. So now she's in real estate. Mm -hmm. 
Again, as I said, she could conveniently um, do the business in her, her own area. However, her key expertise was on farmland, type of irrigation, type of water, type of soil, type right. of fertilizer, all kinds of different types of trees. And um, like, don't you think she's already having some grounds to think that she could have gone to, to a specific like expert type of the niche right. where she could be much more professional compared to anyone else who could sell the same product. Absolutely. So she eventually, I mean, her choice was to go and, and specialize on farmland, right. uh, vacant lots and, 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 lots and um, farmland in Homestead. She immediately broke into the business. So again, you could knock the same door as all other 50,000 50, agents, right? Mm -hmm. Versus identifying her niche and trying to capitalize on the fact that she has already gained throughout her previous backgrounds in life in order to, to get that jump start in the business. Right. So this is example with that particular person. Um, with my case, we, um, when I use the word we, is is typically my husband and I because we do exchange his his professional background is marketing and real estate mm -hmm. as well, so we do exchange a lot of ideas and um, um, in in our case I made a list of all my advantages that I I acquired uh, by by the time I started real estate mm -hmm. so and one of the th obvious things is is the fact that I do speak an, a different language sure so I have additional capacity of engaging with with other type of clientele and the market was on the rise mm -hmm. for for the russian speaking clients and it was like a super clear and obvious that sure. I, I should go after luxury uh, mark, uh, luxury russian speaking clients so i did position myself as a person who specialized on affluent russian speaking clients i love that so, and I, I want to touch on two things there. Number one, you mentioned making a list, mm -hmm. which I think when you're talking about identifying your unique selling proposition and and um, mm -hmm. and positioning, it's probably important to do something uh, like this called a SWOT. For those SWAT of you who don't know what a SWOT is, that's a list of your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So I think as you're going through that and writing down, you know, the list of what am I good at, your strengths, these are purely internal, your weaknesses, things that maybe mm -hmm. you need to improve on, those weaknesses, you can turn weaknesses into strengths and also opportunities which are more external on the outside, like your, people you know, what's happening in the in the sort of geo, uh, political, economic, or tech landscape. In this case, you were saying Russian investment was on the rise, that's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Threats would be also external factors that could uh, harm you. So that, that's a very important list and part of that process, I would say. Exactly. Um, no matter in marketing, no matter what kind of brand we are developing, this is one of the exercises. The initial tasks that we have to do is mm -hmm. the absolutely right. SWOT analysis is like measuring the temperature right. of that particular business at this particular environment. So mm -hmm. you understand what you are strong at, you know your weaknesses, and you know what the external external environment stands for at that particular time. Sure. Um, in, in place so this is absolutely one of the um, exercises mm -hmm. that we go through when we do develop a brand specifically right. a personal brand as well um, I do have another um, concept that I bring um, highlight in my book it's called discovering yourself as an onion layers. Okay, the layers the layers so you have to look at yourself as as if I just slice the onion and I look at different layer of you as a personality. Sure. Okay. So I like the, the starting point is to know your core, mm -hmm. your 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 core drivers that brings you to the to the business and why you do the business. Example, um, and in my in my book you don't really have to just answer the question. Okay, what are your core? And I, I give you the list of those core benefits that you actually bring to the table and you choose them. Like for example, um, for some people, family mm -hmm. is the main core. Therefore, it would be so hard for, pe for, for the person to enjoy real estate business uh, if they are not conveniently serving the area. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they have to be in, in every single soccer game. They have to attend all the school events because for them, family is the prime core. So every time, if, if the business is not like, like you have to drive too far from, mm -hmm. from your home. It's, it's always going to be a distractor for your business. Sure. Okay. So for those be, uh, people who, who the core is like family, then they, it, my recommendation would be, okay, think about the business that you can conveniently create in the area of reach. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 
however, there are some people for whom the uh, the core could be um, like, for example, creativity. Mm -hmm. One of my drivers and why I do things is like I always want to create right. interesting new things. Like I try different types of advertising. I try different types of um, event management. So for me, one of the drivers for business would be to start like really experimenting with different right. marketing techniques. I'm with you on that one. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I did like I, I did advertise on airlines. For oh example. wow! Two I of my favorite passions are yeah, so air, yeah. flying and and advertising creative. Right. So so that drives that drives my 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 thoughts my 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 things. But the the main idea again to summarize sure. about the first P, P product. stands for product, right? Uh, is to be able to understand what you are bringing to the table, sure. what are your core benefits that you can take advantage of right now. Mm -hmm. And as the time change, because we, the show is not only for people who are starting the business, but people are, they could be in real estate for years. Right. But there could be a moment where you just stuck and you want to feel like, what is the, right. what can make me refresh, um, reinvent, refre you know. reinvent and, and bring me to a different level. So in this particular case, again you have to first start with yourself mm -hmm. what have I gained what like what are my core benefits what are my core expertise sure this time you will clearly just from that initial moment you will start clearing yourself uh, and, and 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 trying to find that specific um, a niche that will bring you to a, to a completely different level Excellent. So we're talking to Irina Kim Sang, once again, author of Realtor Branding, Marketing Yourself for Real Estate Success. Irina, so we've covered the first P, which is product. Let's talk about the second P, people in place. Uh, what, what is this about? All right. So once you know what you are bringing to the table, okay, what is the second question is, that is in, in any business? Is to whom you're going to sell yourself, sure. right? So, and um, it's summarized as two simple answers that any realtor has to, to, um, uh, to, to find out for yourself, to determine for yourself. It's, it's definitely who you're going to go after, which is your niche, mm -hmm. okay, or your specialty, um, as well as where they are located. Okay, and I can give you um, a solution in a very simple uh, three kind of th okay. three part technique. Love it. Okay, so the way how you can start uh, your search for specialty, okay, is uh, number one is the most obvious is geographic farming. Right? Okay. So this is v very well known. Okay, so you can specialize on a specific territory, which is the location, sure. right? That location has to be chosen again. You can read a lot of books about it that but free uh, there are just simply two two major things that you have to make sure that you understand about your farming area is the turnover rate, mm -hmm. okay? So the turnover rate it, which means how many homes are sold within 12 last 12 months okay. in the chosen area. And what's a I good mean, turnover it is rate? Yeah, it, it is recommended to have at least 6%. Okay. So six homes in the territory of 100 homes had to be sold in the last, the last 12, 12, months. 12 months. That's a healthy turnover That's rate. That's a healthy turnover rate. Um, in, in, in a way that you have, if you start investing into this uh, territory in terms of marketing efforts, mm -hmm. then it's worth investing. Sure. So if, if the turnover is very low, that means it's nothing is, is selling and the community is, is very stable, which again, you have to see what's coming. Maybe the, the, something that you can be first to the party to start farming that area because you anticipate a specific change okay. in the area. I'll give you an example. Um, I have a friend, he lives in Boca Raton, and in that area we know that there's a lot of um, gated communities. Mm -hmm. So a person just simply um, set up his pipeline in a very, very predictable uh, way. So all the gated communities that he has chosen as his niche, which is the geographic farming, right. they are all located um, around private school. Okay. okay, and the the pattern is super predictable. Once the child gets to the private school, the pa people buy the house. The family buys the house. Mm -hmm. Once he graduates, like once from they get admitted into the, the right, school, right? right? Gotcha. Once they they um, graduate, when the child graduates from high school, they they sell so, the house. So it's about four years. Well, right I mean, it, 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 it like there are several areas, but if it's if it's that twelve year. 
Oh, I, mean, I see. There could be gotcha, a long... Because it could be K to 12. Exactly. I see what you're saying. Exactly. But the idea, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that this is an example of a very predictable pipeline. Right. So this is a good uh, pattern to, to understand that you can really set up a good geographic farming um, using, using um, this, this particular example. Uh, I gave you an example of... Uh, would that fall, sorry to interrupt, would that fall within farm? turnover rate? Or this is all within the umbrella of analyzing whether it's a strong farm area, right? Yes, uh, this all falls in, into the category of your niche can be just simply based on the geographic territory. Got it. So, it, and in this case, a geographic territory is determined, <laughs> yeah, determined by the fact that all those communities, 99% uh, of them will attend that school. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and that's actually the primary reason for people to live there because of that school. Mm -hmm. So that would be one of the examples of, of the geographic farming. Um, the second way to kind of try to identify your niche is to certainly um, identify a demographic group mm -hmm. which is different enough to react to differently to your marketing activities, but which can be reached in some way or another. Um, example, um, I, a, good, a good niche would be, like in my case, affluent Russian-speaking clients. Right. I mean, I, can, I know what they drive. I know that they, f they fly in first class. I know what kind of cars they're going to rent when they come to Miami. Mm -hmm. I know that they're going to go to to rent helicopters and boats, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I can describe demographics. Mm -hmm. I know their age. I know who they are. I know where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. And I can also what see their the ways and, yeah. how to reach them. Okay, so this is an example of finding a niche as a type of clients, mm -hmm. as a specific demographic group. Got it. It could be language specific. Mm -hmm. It could be like, like um, we know a lot of examples. Some people s focus on a, on, a, on a specific language group. Some people focus on, um, but, but the, the idea is that you can describe the demographics sure. and you can You can create a persona, if you will, to go, you go back to branding and marketing speak. Exactly. You know, develop that type, that prototype. Because you have to appeal to them, mm -hmm. and if you if you do not understand who you're appealing to, right. then you if there is no clarity about your target market, mm -hmm. you certainly won't be you will miss you will you will miss the target. Okay, got okay. it. So this is the second way. Mm -hmm. So geographic was the first one. The mm -hmm. second was the the type of the client, which is a niche based on demographic characteristics. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, the third. The, and the third way to mm -hmm. kind of identify, this is the easiest way to, to go for finding that niche, is the type of product that okay. you want to market. Okay? For example, um, I think the, the train is a little bit gone now. I mean, I would probably not say that, um, yeah, you can be a pre-construction specialist now. I mean, a lot of, like, that wave, the big wave of pre-construction and the interest and... Mm -hmm. um, We've only got a couple, I think, pre-construction projects mm -hmm. left in the pipeline for this cycle. I mean, they've, they're pretty much yeah. sold. Right? But you still, I mean, you, you can be positioned as a person specializing on right. a particular product. And again, the, the simple way is to say, okay, I'm, I, I special on the student pre-construction projects, okay? Mm -hmm. Or I'll give you my much wider uh, spectrum. You can be specializing on gated communities, for mm -hmm. example. So this is a type of product. You can be specializing on retiree communities. Mm -hmm. You can be specializing on um, contemporary homes in Miami. Mm -hmm. I mean, saying, I, I'm, a, uh, I'm an expert on waterfront. It's just way too broad. Right. But if you say I'm an expert in waterfront on Venetian islands, this right. is a completely different story. So, so and, and let me bring you some, some point here, is that a lot of people, when I teach a class on, on branding, people say, but don't you think that you are narrowing it too, too much? Like you are really uh, blocking all types of businesses, you can say, and like you can get, my answer to that is simple, is um, remember the phrase that was typically um, given us in, in real estate school, realtor for all your real estate needs. Like, I think this is like, like you have to cross it out right. from your brain, erase it, okay? Because if you are not specializing, right. you are really, you, you, you are not putting yourself as a person of choice. Right. 
you're just like realtor for all your real estate needs, which is equivalent to I am realtor about everything and nothing. Right. Well, right? To, to borrow from Orlando, <laughs> his example that I, that I love, episode five, he says, right. you know, I'm a specialist in Coral Gables, Coconut Grove, Hallandale, Pompano Beach. Yeah, and, you know, everything like, from, from, from Key West. Like, all the yeah, way down to Key West. The episode, from Key West to, all the way to, to Fort Lauderdale. So that's no, do not no, do, do that, not right? Do not do that. Instead, exactly. specialize. And you remind me of, because you've given me some great book recommendations, but you remind me of one that always sticks out uh, to me, and I believe it was the 22 immutable laws of branding. Mm -hmm. And one of the oh, very, yes, right, it. and yes. so one of the very first ones is the law of the one. Right. right. Which, if you think about it, the most successful corporations, you've worked with some of these. Yes. You know, uh, Pizza Hut. Yeah. Uh, Subway. Uh, you know, them. Toys R Us. It's, mm -hmm. well, Toys R Us, bad example. <laughs> well, actually, good example, because if you think about it, they diversify too much, and then yeah. Babies R Us and all the exactly. other things. And, but I digress. The point is, the biggest companies focus on one thing. They're known for one thing. And this is the same application here. If you're saying, I'm the specialist in gated communities in mm -hmm. South Florida, and you can answer for every range, every price point, in the term, that's a completely different conversation for that type of buyer exactly. than is a much broader macro, I'm your realtor for all your needs. Exactly. Which brings us to another point that we kind of discussed early on, is that if you um, imagine the future of real estate, right? Mm -hmm. Like how can people really identify like the reasons for them to work with you mm -hmm. okay they have to have the reasons to choose you mm -hmm. and those reasons are primarily based on value that you can deliver right and the only way you can deliver value is that if you know more than your client mm -hmm. so if you know possess more information than the client can google themselves mm -hmm. uh, and and most of the clients actually they, they do extensive research even though we kind of think you know people don't have time and this is what we are for we are trying to save their time by being experts and and, and providing the service um, i personally think that people when they invest in when they're making the biggest investment such as buying real estate mm -hmm. right uh, when you're gonna take gonna that seriously. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna take it serious. You're gonna go to those uh, streets. You're gonna pass by. You're gonna see the traffic. You're gonna see how the train passes by and makes noise. I mean, right. people do spend time uh, making that decision. Well, and I read, I think, in the, the at least last year in the uh, annual report that the Realtors Association puts out, I think the average time in the cycle of a buyer was between six to nine months in time to, to spent that taking that decision. So, and you can be sure that every night or, you know, regularly they're Googling, searching, driving by, as you said. Exactly. So you want to know more than your client. Exactly. Provide value. Exactly. So I love these three points. I think we're rocking and rolling now here. Uh -huh. So, so we're, we talked about when you're establishing, if it's a good, uh, geographic, uh, territory, you're either going to look at number one, the turnover rate, Mm -hmm. Right is is one way to do it, and I didn't mention the number two. <laughs> so you're gonna look at turnover rate, uh -huh. and you're gonna look at the uh, make sure that you um, set the borders of the a, territory, a boundary, yeah, yeah, boundary of the territory appropriately. Mm -hmm. Because how do you do that? Uh, I mean, you do have to to drive by and see your your uh, geographic farming uh -huh. has to has to include homes of the same caliber. Mm -hmm. It has to have the same type of the, of the product inside of that niche. Sure. Because, I mean, you know, we cross US 1, we have completely different product. We still can be in the same zip code. Mm -hmm. So just blindly going after a specific zip code, right. okay, is, 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 yeah. so, is, is so from the to... marketing point of view, you are like sending the same message to different type of people. Right. You want to make sure that your, your, your boundaries are properly identifying exact set of homes mm -hmm. which are similar in nature and caliber mm -hmm. because you assume that people living in those homes, they meet those the same criteria and expectations right. and price range, etc. So you will be very consistent and will be strategic. It will be very strategic with your message because you are appealing to the same type of, right. of clients. Right. So you're going to, okay, I'm glad you brought that up. So when you're looking, so, so the turnover so rate, turnover and, rate the and the boundaries, uh, in terms of if you're looking at option one, which is a geographic, geographic. territory, option two would be a, spe a specific demographic group. Like you mentioned, uh, a Russian group, for example, yeah. or uh, Ukrainian, uh, Colombian, or, you know, millennials. And it can, yeah, it doesn't have to be language specific group. It can be the 
the type of people who meet the same demographic mm -hmm. characteristics. Empty nesters. Empty uh, nesters, right. first home buyers, uh, retirees, um, second homeowners. Right. Uh, and relocations. I, exactly, relocations. Um, so these are the demographics. And and the most important part about this is not only you have to be able to describe mm -hmm. the group, but you have to be able to see how you can potentially how you can reach, reach them. them. Right. If so describe not, and reach. Exactly. If you do not, if yeah, I can describe some people that, uh, but if I cannot, <laughs> I'd like to meet that guy I'll one give, day. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you an example. Okay, left-handed. I'm going to go after all left-handed. How are you gonna do like that? how you're gonna really de like isolate them and how you're gonna reach them sure so so this particular case um, um, love this it. will not work <laughs> and then third would be product type the type of the product you you are special which you said is marketing and you said that could be the easiest if you're looking at for example um, gated communities versus yes. waterfront on Venetian Island exactly. a very very particular product type. Excellent, Irina. So that's that's the second P. Tell me about the third P, which is? Positioning. Positioning. I love the sound This of is that. my favorite. Actually, if you take the entire, um, like, spec, like, the entire range of all the disciplines within marketing, I think the, the most critical is, is actually understanding the positioning. Some people don't even know what it is. So people, let me explain what positioning is. Uh, the definition of positioning is it's a distinctive Im image in the customer's mind that you are trying to create. So of your product, which in this case of is yourself, you. Right. Of yourself, of, of your services that you offer, of the products that you carry. Mm -hmm. So it's a distinctive image that you are trying to make in the customer's mind. Okay. Okay. And how do we do that? Uh, I, I want to ask you a question. It's going to be a little <laughs> test. So when you hear uh, when you hear the brand name uh, Mercedes Benz, mm -hmm. what comes to your mind? Luxury. Yes, you're right. And I didn't give you this answer, right? So you. This you, is the law of the word, right? <laughs> right. So you came with the answer that when you hear the word Mercedes Benz or you see advertisement, you don't even need to read it. Mm -hmm. You associate it already in your mind with luxury. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the true positioning of uh, of Mercedes Benz is classic luxury. Interesting. Yeah. So. Or luxury they, they, they have an extra <laughs> adjective in there for right, me, right? Right, right. So the best or nothing, right? Mm -hmm. The best or nothing. So uh, let, let's do the second question, sure. which is going to be, uh, um, we'll see how you answer to that question. Putting me in the hot seat yeah, now. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so um, what comes to your mind when you hear uh, brand Volvo? Safety. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so safety, this is the position mm -hmm. of, of, of uh, Volvo brand. And you are not confused. So they're doing a good job with their positioning because... Exactly. So so the consumer is not confused why they chose Mercedes. Right. Because th those who prefer classic classic choice, they would choose Mercedes. Those who prefer safety, family, and all of those things, they, they prefer Volvo, mm -hmm. right? But what is the conclusion of this uh, question? Is that... The marketers have done their job for for you and me to understand why they made that choice. Right. So let's bring it back to personal branding. So um, I have a friend who recently bought a property in, in Georgia, right? And I I always ask like like when they, when people run uh, go through the real estate experience, one of my questions is is usually okay, how was the real estate professional? Like like what did you like? And and some people oh you know I'm probably this is the first time last time. Um, I'm going to call this person, but when people say, oh, I loved my real estate professional, that's where it gets interesting, right? Mm -hmm. So I always ask a question, so why did you like right. him or her? And so this last example was, oh, you know, he was just, it looks like he could see through the walls. And I said, what do you mean by that? And she's like, I mean, we look through the properties uh, and, 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 and he could say, oh, you know, and this wall can be removed and the, the kitchen can expand and this and that. So he gave that immediate in advice on like how things can, can be sure. done and how they could, they could imagine themselves living in the house. Mm -hmm. So I said, I asked the, uh, I asked my friend, how, so how would you like in one word, how would you describe that person? And, um, I said that person just can see through the walls. Okay. And, and I think like she gave already like a positioning for that guy. Sure. And imagine if you can I hope patch... she left like a Yelp review or a testimony. <laughs> <Right. laughs> no, now like we, we speak the same marketing language. Imagine if you can take that and package right. him. If we don't, if we don't have those things, 
uh, again, you're just falling on the shelf with all potatoes mm -hmm. and you're not Russell Potato. I mean, you have to have reason, <laughs> right? Right. Why people choose you. And, and, and this is the hardest the, the hardest part mm -hmm. of branding is to come hardest up with, or hottest yeah. no 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 hard the, the, the difficult the most oh, difficult the part hard. i'm sorry the, and, and, I'm like, it is getting too, it no, is no, getting no, warm no. in here now this is no seriously it's it's the i think it's the most difficult yeah decision that you have to make why um uh, i'll give you example and you will um you will actually see the answer why uh, can you guess uh, what is the most difficult industry to actually design any image for things, for products or services? Any guesses? Most difficult the image. The most, yeah, like in which industry it would be so hard to design, to design this Paper image? Paper products? No. Okay, I'll give you a good guess. Perfume. Interesting. Can you imagine? You it's people, a scent, right? It's, it's only a scent. The only way that people... I was people, way off. No, no, no. <laughs> Paper products. <laughs> no, but... But thank you. But you can, I mean, imagine the only way you can understand and feel mm -hmm. is when you smell it. Right. right? And what does that smell, and you know, And what those smell will, will or imply or, or will be associated with right. in your mind. So the marketers, they do their job through what? Through visuals, mm -hmm. through colors, through the model, through mm -hmm. the character that they choose to show you that uh, Miss Dior is for young and vibrant and this right. and that. But uh, Givenchy is for sophisticated mm -hmm. status women. Okay. So when I look at the real estate professional picture on the business card or on the website, I mean, I want to just from that initial uh, visual of, of the website. I want to be able to create that impression, the first impression, oh, you know, he's serious. I think I want to work with him. Right. Or, you know, he looks so approachable. I think I'm going to, I will be able to, to work in a comfortable environment with him mm -hmm. or this person looks um just by the looks I'm, I'm i'm not even going too too deep into what the message is and all of the above we'll, we'll get right there soon um but just the the first impression that is made from the our uh, uh headshot mm -hmm. right like what is that image and i mean you can give so many bad examples of like how people look on their images first of all they're outdated even having an outdated image or right. says like it's you that from you are 20 not years professional, ago <laughs> that you don't care about your image whatever is there you know i just sent and then the, the, the real person comes and says, i mean there's a joke a person comes to the door and then oh you're like well, you have to do a double sister? take right yeah did you did you send your sister so be authentic i think is yeah, the moral of the story there so um um one of the most critical things when you are designing positioning mm -hmm. is you certainly have to understand what image mm -hmm. you would like to portray, mm -hmm. what image you would like to communicate, and that image not only has to be independent mm -hmm. from, f from, from the rest of your marketing decisions, it has to be aligned with the people that you are appealing to. So it has to be aligned with the first two pieces, with essentially, with pieces. product and people in place. In other words, you're pretty much uh, positioning becomes a connector mm -hmm. between who you are and who you're going after. Mm -hmm. And the position becomes a bridge mm -hmm. between what you are offering and to whom you're offering. So I like that. And I feel like we can spend a lot of time on, on that one. But we're running out of, of time for today. We're going to... Um, Let's recap because uh, we're actually, for those of you, if I didn't mention this yet, we're going to have part two, which is next week, where we're going to come back and finish the rest of the, uh, the rest of the seven Ps. But today we've covered with Irina, number one product, number two people in place, and number three positioning, right? The, and, you, and you said to me off camera that those, these three are the hardest, Yes. right? That's correct. So we have some homework for our audience today before we come back next week. And, and what is it, Irina? Yes. I think it, it's always a good transition to actually um, for yourself mm -hmm. to, to try to, to answer those questions. So my first question to you would be, um, do you know your strengths? Do you know your advantages that you can now at this time of the game bring to the table? So make a list of those. Mm -hmm. Okay, This is the first. So thing. make a list of your strengths, of your and, strengths advantages. and advantages. Okay. Um, one thing that I, I would love also to emphasize under number one, especially for those who are in the business for some time, mm -hmm. is um, uh, the exercise, I call it uh, Google audit. 
what that means is that just Google yourself okay. and see what comes up. Okay. Okay. This is a very... I don't know if I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> No, I had a, a seriously. I had a student in my class, and he he googled his professional name, and, and a lot of articles about murder cases oh came up. So you don't. I mean, people who don't do it periodically, they they actually they are risking. You don't even. I mean, if you don't check in, you have, if you're not checking yourself online right. from time to time, I mean, you can be in a big mess. Yeah. So do the Google audit. Right. Go, uh, Google yourself as your professional name mm -hmm. okay this is number one mm -hmm. number two any key search words that you would like to be associated with mm -hmm. is again so name and keyword yeah especially you if be you are in the business for a while like if you are positioning yourself as my case uh russians russian affluent russian speaking realtor if i, I if i type um, Russian realtor, what comes up? I mean, mm -hmm. I can tell. My website comes up number one. Great. Yeah. Good for you. <laughs> so, so, and that's the goal, right? So the idea is that, okay, what comes up in associations with you or the key search words that you want to be associated with? Okay. And if you are not there or if you have bad image or you have bad reputation or inconsistent image, mm -hmm. there is a room to work. Mm -hmm. And that's the first thing you got to do when you start branding yourself. Okay. So, so this is under product sure it's all about you first so this is homework related to, to product so, yes the second um, kind of um, exercise that I would ask you to do which is for the second P people in place is certainly can you describe to us what is your niche okay and again you we just gave you three directions either it's a geographic territory mm -hmm. demographic group or a type of product that you specialize on so if you are clear on that half of the success is based on clarity who you're going after right and the third thing which i assume i'll be brave to assume that many people have not even thought about it too much which is i think is the difficult task and that what requires some time and mm -hmm. then strategic strategic thoughts is what kind of image you want to portray mm -hmm. to those people who you just described Excellent. Which is positioning. So the homework is to make a list of your strengths. Uh, this could be also part of the SWOT exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, strengths and what makes you attractive. Two would be to uh, your Google audit, which is going to include Googling your name and also keywords that you want to be associated with. And the third is to uh, describe your niche. Did we say yes. describe your yeah, niche? Yes. Right? Um, did I miss something here? Why did no, I write you, down you number just, four? You just I, I come up, <laughs> my notes are, I'm trying to write as you're talking. So you guys have your homework. We're going to come back next week. You don't want to miss it, whether you're a new agent, whether you're a veteran agent, you want to re analyze, reassess your branding and marketing, come back. Also send us an email to Miami Real Estate Podcast at Cervera.com if you have questions for Irina. She's going to answer them uh, next week. And also you can leave us a comment on, on social at, at Cervera RE. So come back next week. Irina, this was fun and we have oh, more so. to continue talking about. Thank you so much. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. Thanks. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed the show and we certainly enjoyed making it. We hope you will come back. We've got some more great content dedicated to informing, intriguing, and inspiring Miami real estate professionals. Where can you find us? We're on the podcast store, wherever podcasts are available. That's iTunes, of course. We're also on Podbean, Spotify, Audible, TuneIn, Stitcher, and Google Play. You can even ask Alexa about us. Go ahead and visit cervera.com slash blog. That's where our newsroom is located. We've got some more great content there as well, market reports, and more. You can sign up for our newsletter there. Connect with us on social at Cervera RE or send us an email, Miami Real Estate Podcast at Cervera.com. We would love to hear from you. So, from all of us here in Miami, where the future is always bright, until next time.